ultimate love of the creation whether it be your own desires your status your fame your money your wealth your family what have you or the love of the creator they do not exist together right so one form of the love will ultimately expel or diminish the other form of the love so having the love of the highest the creator is the most beneficial form that will help you live a most fulfilling life so it's something to make a choice of like which love do we want to focus on because eventually and ultimately one love will diminish and expel the other from your heart so when you reach that form of love um, the love of the creator then loving others and other things become for the sake of that love right so you love other things because they help you get closer and that help you increase in the love of the creator right or it prevents you from losing or diminishing the love of the creator so let's talk of uh, example right so you may have some friends that you love because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be close to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to take care of them they could be like immediate family members parents spouse children and so on and so forth right or people that remind you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people that teach you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it could also be um, the love or pursuit or having things that would prevent you from falling into haram, from f falling into prohibited things, right? So having a spouse or pursue, pursuing a spouse or getting married or having a good relationship with a spouse, having a good life with a spouse helps you to prevent you from zina, from uh, falling into illegal or impermissible relationships in Islam. So your pursuit and your dip, uh, your spending time and investing in your relationship with your spouse actually helps you from falling into haram relationships which would have caused you to diminish or to decrease your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his love for you. So you see how it becomes all aligned and how it becomes you know in, in line and it becomes eventually for the love of the creator, the one. Obviously, um, as we know that the shirk, shirk in that love, associating a partner in that love is not free given, right? So that means that you loving someone equally or more than you love the creator. And that love could be for people, for fame, for status, for wealth, for assets, and also for your desires. So we see in Surah Al-Jafi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 23, <laughs> Have you seen him who takes his own lust his own desires as his god so his obedience his submission his following is only to his desires right and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and Allah left him astray and sealed his hearing and his heart and put a cover on his sight so he's not able to see beyond that right his all concern and focus is his own desires what would make him feel good what it make him feel the enjoyment and so on and so forth right and, and the verse continues who then will guide him after Allah will you not then remember so as we make these choices of following our desires or following the knowledge or following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a very important thing to consider because as we keep on doing more on the desire side you know as we were talking about earlier you know may Allah protect us it may come to a level that you know our desires become our God, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Who can be a better advisor and who can be a best support other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator himself. So let's take a look at a beautiful hadith Qudsi, which is a narration by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he's narrating from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this comes in Sahih al-Bukhari and it's a part of a longer narration, we'll take part of that, in which the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been reported to have said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ما تقرب إلي عبدي بمثل أداعي ما افترضت عليه. 
ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها فبي يسمع وبي يبصر وبي يمشي ولئن سألني لا أعطينه ولئن استعاذني لا أعيذنه So the translation of that goes like whoever shows and midi towards someone devoted to me, someone an ally to me, someone an awali to me, I shall be at war with him, right? So in that case, you know, when you reach that state is, you know, your enemy becomes the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Isn't that beautiful, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions how does that happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant draws not near to me with anything more loved by me than the religious duties I have made obligatory upon him. So the best way, the most, the fastest way, the most efficient way for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to focus on the quantity and quality of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory on us. Things that are compulsory, these things that are wajib, things that are furth upon us. And then to excel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and my servant continues to draw near to me with voluntary deeds, with voluntary actions, so that I shall love him. Right? So he continues doing that to a point that Allah loves him. And when I love him, I'm, I am his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his foot with which he walks. And if you were to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him. And if you were to ask me for refuge, I would surely grant it to him. So now think about this. The word that Hadith uses is wabi, right? So this word of ba, which you know some scholars have explained is to be as a companionship, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you when you're doing those actions, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you with his support, with his aid, with his um, guidance, with his facilitation, and so on and so forth. So doesn't life becomes so beautiful because whenever you're taking a decision, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aiding you in taking the right decision, in choosing the right partners, in choosing the right friends, in choosing the right spouse, in you know, choosing the right ventures for business and career or education or dawa or activism or socialism, anything. Right? And if you think about some of the verses in Quran, which such as in Surah Tawbah, verse number 40, uh, narrating that how the Prophet of Allah وسلم, was telling Abu Bakr an, when they were in, in, the, in the cave and, and the enemy, the mushrikeen, were chasing them to find them and to you know, persecute them. And he tells them, Look, لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not be afraid, do not grieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Right, so if you have that sort of notion in your life, that sort of awareness, that sort of internalization of this concept in your life that Allah is with you, is aiding you, supporting you in in everything, and whatever happens to you is by the choice of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and His choices for you are better than your plans for yourself. You know how perfect and how beautiful life would be. And then we have in Surah the Shu'ara that how Musa al-Islam responds to his people, right? Kalla inna ma'iya Rabbi sayyidin, right? And this is when you know, he's faced with sea, ocean in front of him, and, you know, Pharaoh and the Pharaoh and his people chasing them behind them, right? So, you know, from a, from a worldly perspective, 2 plus 2 equals 4. In materialistic perspective, you have, you know, destruction and death in front of you and, and behind you, right? But, you know, he can see beyond that. And he says, look, no, this will, ne- this will never happen. Allah will not let us go to waste. And Allah is with us and he will guide us. Right, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala converting Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun alayhi salam, you know, when they were being sent to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh, and they were concerned about what he will do to them, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that, look, لا تخاف إنني معكما أسمع وأرى. You know, do not fear. Verily, I am with you, hearing and seeing. So this is something that we can aim to get to. Right, this is a higher form of love. And now, you know, if we were to um, Look at it from a different angle. Look, the sweetness of faith, right? I mean, if you're not enjoying the sweetness of faith and, you know, the beauty of faith, there's a beautiful hadith in the Sahihain in which uh, the Prophet of Allah وسلم, has been reported to have said that there are three qualities. Whoever has them will taste the sweetness of Iman, will taste the sweetness of faith. And these are the three qualities. Number one, to love Allah and His Messenger more than anyone else. 
Okay, to love a creation, a slave of Allah, only for the sake of Allah, and then thirdly, to abhor, to hate, returning to this belief after Allah has saved him from it, as he would hate to be thrown into the fire of hell. So number one, like, I mean, who do we have, you know, pure love for? Who do we desire most? Who is our main focus? Allah and his messenger and their pleasure or someone else, right? Secondly, when we love people, is it because of Allah or some other reasons? And then thirdly, you know, how much do we value faith, right? And, and, and a part of that is also like, you know, as we as we've talked about earlier, that disobedience and sins and, you know, consistent on that and not repenting and not stopping and not, you know, trying to give them up can lead one to disbelief. Right. So are we concerned about it that, hey, you know, I really want to avoid, you know, going back to disbelief. Right. And are we taking the measures for that? And then a beautiful ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 165, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Right, and from mankind are some who have taken for worship other besides Allah. Right, they love them as they love Allah. But those who believe love Allah more than anything else. Now, when we're talking about these loves, it's important to take a quick look at the different types of love. So first love is the love of Allah, right? How much do you actually love Allah, right? And that would necessitate actually following Allah, meaning that if you love Allah, you would also love what Allah loves, right? And that's the second type of love, which is to love what Allah loves. And that would lead one, a true love of Allah would lead one to actually follow Islam and to follow the rules and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to obey to him and to submit to him. Now, the third form is basically you love someone else, a creation, but you love it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the fourth one is actually loving someone alongside Allah. So it's not for Allah, but it's some someone even if it's a contradiction with Allah, you actually love them similarly or even more than Allah. And that's where you know you fall and start falling into shirk and this is something that's not uh, pro, uh forgiven. So that's a very dan- dangerous territory to be in and that could be your love for your own desires or your own thinking or your own intellect or you know above and beyond the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Similar to what shaitan did, right? He he did not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. Rather, he refused it and he was thinking on his own that, oh no, I'm better than Adam and so on and so forth and all that argument that we are aware of, right? So you could have similar things when we when our desires, our family or culture or friends, you know, are at um, contest with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. And then finally, uh, the love, which is natural love, right? So someone who is really, really thirsty is really going to love a nice cold drink, right? So that's a natural love, a natural inclination, right? Or the natural love for, you know, wealth or comfort or, you know, uh, opposite gender and so on and so forth, right? So these are natural forms of love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed and they're not blameworthy, right? They're not blameworthy as long as they do not distract us from our primary purpose, right? If they do distract us from their our primary purpose, then they could they are they could be blameworthy or they could be following into what we were discussing earlier about loving others as you love Allah or loving others more than what you love Allah, right? And this is something if you take a quick look at two verses in uh, in the speech of Allah in the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the first one in Surah Al Munafiqun, in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ya yuladin amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an dhikrillah." O oh, you who have believed, do not let your wealth and your children distract you, deter you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this is when our children or, you know, um, the wealth or the pursuit of wealth or the preservation of wealth come in in opposition to Allah. So we may be missing prayers because of them. We may be, you know, forgetting or being distracted to pause and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do what Allah has commanded and maybe taking Haram and prohibited means to increase our wealth and protect our children and so on and so forth. Likewise, in Surah An Nur, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, praising the people. Right, so He's saying, "Rijalul la tulhihim tijaratun wala bayyun an dhikrillah." Right, so there are people that their wealth and their uh, their transaction, uh, their trade does not distract them from the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So they do engage in that. 
They're not lazy. They're engaging in that. They're active. But when the time for that, when the time for prayer comes in, they would stop, pause, and do what's necessary. Likewise, they would not engage in you know haram dealings and so on and so forth. So that's something to uh, keep in mind that that natural form of love and inclination is not an issue. What becomes an issue is when it becomes um, uh, in opposition to or a distraction. <laughs> Da 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 da